this is session six of Sunday School Stories and our last story is Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. Now God had led the Hebrew people through the desert toward the Promised Land and finally they're standing on just the other side of the Jordan River. But the Jordan River, it was springtime and it was in flood. So God showed that he was in control of all the forces of nature. He told the Joshua to tell the priests to take the ark and step down into the river. And as they did, the waters began to pile up, so that eventually the whole people were able to cross on dry ground. And then as the priests brought the ark up out of the river, it just returned to its normal flow. This would have put fear into the people in the Promised Land, the Canaanites, because they really saw that river, especially in springtime, as their protection. Now the people of Hebrew people camped there for a few days, and then they were to take the city of Jericho. Now Jericho was a symbol of military power and strength. It had fortified walls about 25 feet high and 20 feet thick. The soldiers standing on top of those walls were able to see for miles around and so it really was seen as impenetrable. So an angel appeared to Joshua and gave him the instructions. Tell the priests to carry the ark and the people and the musicians, that's the trumpeters, were to march around the city one time every day for six days. But the people were to remain absolutely silent. On the seventh day, they were to march around seven times, the trumpets blowing, but the people silent. But on the seventh time, when the trumpet sounded, they were to shout. And so that's what they did. On the seventh time around, Joshua said, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And when they shouted, the walls collapsed and the Hebrew people were able to just walk in and take the city. Now it's a strange story and it's a strange way to win a battle. But the Hebrew people were not great warriors. They were up against a place that was considered impenetrable. The strange method of marching around six days would have, I think, put a bit of fear and wondering what on earth's going on into the hearts of the people inside the city. But it was also to test the Hebrew people. Were they willing to obey instructions and not try and do things in their own strength? The blowing of the trumpets was a reminder to them that this was God's work because they used the trumpets in their religious festivals. Carrying the ark, the ark was the presence of God amongst them. So again, a reminder that this is God's battle. The collapse of the walls, well, that would have shown the Canaanites that all the man-made defences were absolutely nothing in the face of God. The promised land was the promised land because God had said he would give them this land as he took them out of Egypt. From the very beginning, it was important for them to see the conquest of the land was not theirs, it was God's. The story is a reminder to us. We should listen to God. We should be faithful. We should do things his way and not be tempted to do them our own way. It shows that if it's God's plan and we are obedient, then nothing is impossible. It can happen through his power and our obedience. The splendor of the King himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and tremble at his voice, tremble at his voice. How great is our God, so great be how great is our God.
my heart.